Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to share with you how to use Send to Fusion, which is new in Inventor 2022. The Send to Fusion command is beneficial in a couple different workflows. We're going to focus on the CAM workflow in this video. So the scenario I've kind of devised here is that the designer creates the part in Inventor, and then that they have either a coworker that does the CNC programming in Fusion, or they sub this part out, and that company that's going to create the part or machine the part does their programming in Fusion as well. So to set the stage here, you can see that I've got a part that is created in Inventor. You can see all my features over here. If I jump to the CAM tab, you'll see that there's no setups, no toolpaths, there's nothing in that respect in that that tab so I go back to my model tab I am now ready to send this to fusion so I'm going to go to my environments tab of my ribbon I'm going to use send to fusion so it's going to open up this browser on the right hand side or this uh, panel on the right hand side where it's kind of basically saying work on your designs in fusion 360 with manufacturing generative design or simulation workflows you can turn this message off. I've just left it on so that you can see what you'll see the first time you run this. I'm going to go ahead and say continue down here. So this is based on Fusion Team, which is a little bit different than regular Fusion. It's taken my Inventor login. It's run out to Fusion Team. It says, okay, what teams does Steve have access to? So at the top here, you can see I have a drop down of all the different teams I have access to. That specific team, Mesa Training, has multiple different projects inside of it, and I'm going to pick the Olson CAD CAM. So let's just pretend that that's the company that we're going to outsource this to. So there is a folder structure there I can push it into. I'm just going to dump it right into that directory. So I'm going to say upload new file, and it's going to just take a few seconds. It's going to upload, and then when it's done uploading, you can see that I can click to view on, uh, on the cloud in the team whatever here. So uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to, I already have that window open on my other screen. I'm going to bring it over and I'll do a quick refresh because I haven't refreshed since then. You can see it's over here on the side there. There's that caller.ipt. So what would the other side, what would the, the contractor, what would Olson CAD CAM do with this? So if I now jump over to Fusion, you can see I'm now in Fusion. I've got all these different files over here on the left-hand side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert that part into a design. I could open it or I could just insert it into another design, which I think is probably the better thing to do. I've tried both techniques and creating a new file and then inserting it is feels like the better methodology here. So I'm going to Go ahead and save this untitled document. I'll call it Cam for Caller. And once that's created, I can right click on this caller.ipt and I can say insert into current design. And there it is. And now it's asking if I want to position it anywhere. I'll just say OK. So the one thing to point out here is you can see that there is a link back to that caller.ipt. It's basically Fusion Team has any CAD functionality just like Inventor does. So it's allowing me to place that IPT in another Fusion design as a reference. So the next step here would be for us to create some tool paths, go back to Inventor, update the file, make a slight change to it to see what happens, and then come over here and see the update so we can kind of see that they, they are staying connected even though they're in two separate applications. Before I do that though, I need to create some tool paths on this one. So I'm going to stop the video here, take a few seconds, create my cam setup, and I will catch up with you once I have that done. So I took a few moments and created just two simple tool paths, a facing operation, and an adaptive clearing, just enough to, to see that when I change the shape of the part, if I change the diameter or whatever, we'll actually see the update here. So 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the design space. I'm then going to flip back over to Inventor. So here in Inventor, let's say I decide I want to change the diameter. So if I go to the sketch, hit the sketch here, and say that this is maybe going to be two and a half inches in diameter, uh, finish sketch, maybe even change the thickness of it a little bit as well. So we'll edit the extrusion here. We'll sorry, in a quarter, let's go to 3.375, so 3 eighths. All right, so it's a little bit bigger here. So let me save it. And I'm actually going to close this panel over here because when I click the button again, it will look and see that that file is already in Fusion. And you can see here I'm getting a message. A file with the same name exists at this location. A new version will be uploaded. So what's going to happen here when I say upload new version, it's going to push a new version to the cloud. So it's going to have a second version of this component. And then the design I've made, the toolpath will say, hey, there's a new version here. I need to update. So let's go ahead and see that. So I'm going to say update or upload new version. So I'm going to close that, that message there, and I'm going to flip back over to Fusion. So now I'm here in Fusion. You can see that the data in this folder is updated. If I hit refresh, you can see now on version 2 of caller.ipt, I've uploaded a new version. You can see these little triangles here saying that there is a new version of this component available. So if I click on that, it will then prompt it to update according to the new version which you see that si that diameter change and that thickness change. So now you can see we've got the, the new size updated here. If I jump into my manufacturer workspace, you'll see that these are basically at a date. If I right click here, I could then say generate. It'll take a few seconds. It will recreate those or recalculate those and then I'll have the new appropriate toolpath that matches the new size. So you can see here is a very simple process. This would be very easy collaboration with someone else in your company or outside your company that is maybe doing the CAM process for you. So you can see the send a fusion command is really nice. If I have a new version, just make sure I hit, you know, upload new version. And then anybody that's consuming that data on the Fusion side will get those little triangles saying, hey, an updated version is available. Do you want to update? And of course you do. So um, you should see that that works fairly smoothly, fairly easily. Well, that's all for now. Hopefully you found this information helpful and something you can apply in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, Thanks for watching.